Welcome back. Next we'll consider angular velocity and angular acceleration in some more detail. So let's consider the rotation of a rigid body about an axis defined by the unit normal vector n, which is normal to the plane of rotation of point P. Point P has position vector r, and r makes an angle phi to n. The position of P is theta, and the velocity vector tangent to the circle v is dr dt, or r dot. Now the magnitude of v is ds dt, where s is arc length around the arc, which would be r d theta dt. Now r here is the radius in the plane of rotation uh, of the point P, which is therefore uh, r sine phi. So therefore ds dt equals little r theta dot sine phi, where little r is the magnitude of the position vector r, and theta dot is the magnitude of the angular velocity vector omega. So the magnitude of the velocity equals the magnitude of the radius times the magnitude of the angular velocity times sine of phi, where the angular velocity vector has magnitude theta dot and direction n. Now, if we make the construction omega cross r and take its magnitude, then its magnitude would be the magnitude of omega times the magnitude of r times the sine of phi, which is ds dt, which is the magnitude of v, as we found above. Therefore, given that v is perpendicular to the plane of omega and r, we can therefore write that omega cross r equals ds dt times the unit vector v divided by the magnitude of v, but ds dt is the magnitude of v, so therefore omega cross r is v. And so we now have a vector definition of the angular velocity omega in terms of the position vector and the velocity vector. So v, which is r dot, is omega cross r, where the magnitude of omega is theta dot. The acceleration a is dv dt, which from our previous uh, slide is d dt of omega cross r. Applying the product rule is d omega dt cross r plus omega cross dr dt, which is d omega dt cross r plus omega cross v. And d omega dt is alpha, the angular acceleration vector, so we get that a is equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross v. So the angular acceleration alpha also acts along the axis of n, and its magnitude is omega dot or theta double dot. Now making use of, again, v equals omega cross r, that gives us that a equals alpha cross r, and substituting omega cross r here, we get omega cross omega cross r. And so looking at the direction of this vector, we can see that these are the tangential component of a, and that this term here is the radial component of the acceleration. So let's consider the tangent and normal components of the acceleration of a point in the plane normal to the axis of rotation that is rotating in a circular motion about the origin. So our point is P with position vector R and it has angular velocity omega, which is theta dot times n, where n is a unit normal vector perpendicular to the plane. The velocity v equals omega cross r, and omega is theta dot, so v equals theta dot n cross r, 
and the magnitude of v equals r theta dot, where r is the magnitude of the position vector r. Now let's consider the tangent and normal components of the acceleration. Again, omega equals theta dot n, and alpha the angular acceleration equals theta double dot n. And the acceleration vector, a, has a tangent component parallel to the circumferential unit vector e theta, and a normal component parallel to the radial unit vector e r. So from the previous slide, recall that the acceleration a is alpha cross r plus omega cross omega cross r, which is a vector triple product. Now, recall from vector analysis, the vector triple product a cross b cross c equals b times a dot c minus c times a dot b. In this case, a and b are omega, so we get that omega cross omega cross r equals omega times omega dot r minus r times omega dot omega. Well, omega and r are orthogonal to each other, so this dot product is zero. Omega dot omega is the square of the magnitude of the angular velocity, which is theta dot squared. So therefore, a equals theta double dot n cross r times e sub r minus theta dot squared times r times e sub r. Therefore, the tangent component of the acceleration is r theta double dot. That's because the tangent direction is the direction of n cross e sub r, which is perpendicular to the plane of the normal in r. So that's the tangent direction. So therefore, r theta double dot is the tangent component of the acceleration. And the normal component, a sub n, is minus r theta dot squared, which is minus r omega squared. So the tangent component of the acceleration is r times the magnitude of the angular acceleration, the normal component is minus r times the square of the angular velocity magnitude. Let's look at some special cases of rotation about a fixed axis. Again, omega is theta dot n, so the magnitude of omega is theta dot. The magnitude of the angular acceleration is d dt of the magnitude of omega, which is d omega d dt, or applying the chain rule, d omega d theta, d theta dt, which is omega d omega d theta. So when you need to integrate an angular acceleration as a function of theta, you can use this form. A special case would be a uniform rotation in which the acceleration is zero. For example, theta equals theta naught plus omega t. A uniformly accelerated rotation with a constant acceleration could be omega equals omega naught plus the magnitude of the acceleration times t, which would mean that theta equals theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared integrating. And then taking the square of omega, we get omega equals omega naught squared plus two omega naught alpha t plus alpha squared t squared where alpha is the magnitude of the acceleration vector. And so that means that omega squared is omega naught squared plus two alpha times omega naught t plus one half alpha t, which is omega naught squared plus two alpha times theta minus theta naught. Now let's consider the angular velocity and acceleration when the motion of the particle p also includes uh, a radial component. So that there's both a theta and an r component to the trajectory of p. So v equals r dot equals omega cross r, and a, the acceleration vector, equals r double dot, or v dot, which is equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross omega cross r, as we saw before, where alpha is omega dot, is theta double dot n, where n is the unit normal vector to the plane of v and r. Now in this problem, the radial unit vector would have Cartesian components of cosine theta, sine theta, and zero. 
so cosine theta, sine theta, and zero. And the theta unit vector will be perpendicular, so it will have components minus sine theta, cosine theta, zero. And just to check that these are in fact orthogonal, if we take er dot e theta, we can see that we get zero. So we can use these expressions to compute the derivatives of the radial and theta unit vectors with respect to theta. So d e r d theta will be minus sine theta plus cosine theta zero, which is the same as e theta. Therefore, we can write d e r equals e theta d theta. Similarly, taking the derivative of e theta with respect to theta, we get minus cosine theta minus sine theta zero, which is equal to minus e r, which says that d e theta equals minus e r d theta. So now, if the particle velocity v is equal to r dot e r, so that's the radial component, plus r theta dot, which is the circumferential component, times e theta, then the particle acceleration a is equal to v dot, which is the first derivative of this expression, so r double dot e r plus r dot times e r dot plus r dot times theta dot times e theta. plus r times theta double dot times e theta, plus r times theta dot times e theta dot. And from the results we obtained above, since d e r equals e theta d theta, then e r dot must equal theta dot times e theta. In other words, d e r dt equals d theta dt e theta, and e theta dot, which is d e theta dt, equals minus theta dot e r, which allows us then to write a equals r double dot minus r theta dot squared times e r, which is the radial component, plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot times e theta, which is the circumferential component of the acceleration. In this case, when the motion includes a change of radius as well as a change of angle. Let's consider the general rotation of a rigid body about an axis through the origin O. At a point P with position vector R, the angular velocity is omega and the angular acceleration is alpha. The velocity of point P is v, which equals dr dt, or r dot, and is equal to omega cross r, and the acceleration of p, a, is equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross omega cross r, where alpha equals omega dot. Now this is the most general rotation, and in this case the angular acceleration alpha can be thought of as the velocity of the tip of the angular velocity vector. 